don't have a uh, quorum present yet, but we have a very uh, tight uh, timeline and two bills. So um, I think uh, we'll have uh, Representative Lilly uh, present the uh, legacy bill, and then as soon as we have a quorum, we'll officially uh, convene the, uh, <coughs> the meeting. But uh, in the interest of time, uh, Representative uh, Lilly, if you could uh, go over the uh, highlights of the bill and then we'll take care of the motions later to adopt the division report and so on. Sounds great, Mr. Chair. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, um, so I'm going to discuss uh, a legacy bill this, this morning with you, and uh, it's uh, quite, a, quite a good bill, I think. Uh, so in 2008, uh, the voters of Minnesota passed a constitutional amendment to uh, uh, increase their the tax on themselves when they bought things and uh, so that this money would go to uh, outdoor projects in the, the habitat, hunting and fishing area, uh, clean water, parks and trails, and the arts and cultural areas of uh, the state of Minnesota. And uh, so we're in our 10th year and we had a big celebration and uh, um, but uh, this is quite similar to some of the other bills that have passed in previous years. Um, there are some differences, but there's some uh, great, great things in the bill. Um, um, I'll start off with uh, the Lassard Sam's uh, uh, outdoor heritage area. There's uh, um, the whole entire bill's about uh, um, $630 million. Lassard Sam's is $127 million. Uh, of projects that are spread all over Minnesota from one end to, to the other and uh, are doing great, great works. Uh, one of the things uh, that is done this year that I think is, uh, um, it's been done through the last couple of years, but it's increasing this year, is uh, we've added some money for the, um, um, for the CPL grants. Um, which I think is kind of a neat effort. So that allows some smaller organizations to have access to funds and to do projects around the state. Um, there's also the traditional groups that have gotten uh, money and that are out there doing good work all over the state. And um, in the crowd is uh, Mark Johnson, uh, the director of the council, but there's, uh, um, there's many, um, it's a citizen council and they come up with proposals and it's I pretty much uh, included 100% of the of of the projects as it was presented, so um, we can get into details as you want. Um, moving on to the clean water area of the um, of the bill, um, the clean water um, also Lazard Sam's is every uh, every year uh, they have projects. The clean water part of the bill is for the biennium and the same with the other two areas the parks and trails and the arts area but the Lassard area is different so it's coming um, they'll be back again next year essentially before us um, but the clean water area is uh, um, 261 million dollars and that's to uh, protect and enhance and restore lake uh, water and, uh, and drinking water in uh, the waters of the state of Minnesota I always kind of argue uh, that uh, it was the little girl on the dock when the bill first, uh, I don't know if you remember those TV ads way back when, but um, I think, you know, so many people come and take credit for passing the Constitutional Amendment, but I always think it was a little girl on the dock, um, you know, that was throwing the rock at the end of the dock and, you know, saying how important clean water is. But there's quite a bit of great projects in uh, the clean water and you can look at it and go through the bill and I can certainly ha have questions uh, or answer questions as they come but um, there's a water council and uh, they pr propose uh, ideas and most of them we've included but uh, through the legislative process we've added uh, and made added and made some changes and improvements if you will or uh, uh, wrecking it according to the Clean Water Council. Uh, there's a letter in your packet, you can look at it, but I, I think the, uh, I, um, the improvements that we've, or changes rather, um, that we've made uh, in the legislative and the House side are good improvements. And uh, I, I think, again, it's um, something that we can go to the voters at the end and say, um, our water is going to be more drinkable, more fishable, and swimmable. And I think that's been met by. Uh, the Clean Water Council and some of the tweaks that we've done. 
Um, the parks and trails uh, part is $101 million, and uh, it's basically divided around the state. So 40% uh, um, is going to the DNR. Um, and if you're familiar, we, they just celebrated like the t anniversary <laughs> of the ICANN program. That's covered by legacy dollars, and that gets uh, people out onto the parks and trails uh, system. Uh, new starters, you know, they'll teach you how to camp, they'll teach you how to kayak, they'll teach you all these things, but it's been a really successful program, and that's funded out of this 40% uh, of the legacy, for example. And then 40% of the money goes to the uh, metro, um, and it's one of the most overloved uh, systems in the entire country, um, uh, parks and trails in the metro. Um, I think there's over 50 million users a year on those systems. And the greater uh, Minnesota, the remaining 20% goes to greater Minnesota, and they're doing a great job as well of uh, improving uh, connectivity um, from various communities all over the state and uh, very successful there. Um, and then uh, that leaves uh, the arts and cultural uh, a part of the fund, and that's $140 million. And that is um, quite similar to bills that you've seen in the past going to uh, the libraries, for example. Well, probably the biggest thing is going to the arts councils, and that's uh, um, doing grants all over the state. Goes to some of our biggest institutions, but also reaches down to all sorts of ethnic uh, museums and uh, um, to all sorts of uh, different things. And uh, even uh, I was looking in the crowd, and even to our county fairs. And uh, we all love our county fairs, of course. And uh, I don't know how many there are. I think there's 89 around the state, but uh, there's some money in there for county fairs and whatnot. But uh, I certainly could stand for questions, and uh, I, I love the bill. I always, uh, um, what I talk about on the House floor, I, in the past, I've been lucky enough to talk about it, but I, uh, um, this is my first time chairing, but the, the, I always say that if you can't win a campaign on some of this stuff that's in this bill, uh, you're a pretty bad politician because there's money in there for your libraries, there's in, in money in there for parks and trails, there's money in there for you know fixing habitat and and those sort of things and just you know the arts. Anyways, I obviously quite like it, but uh, this money is spent all over the state, and I think uh, the people that are involved. Uh, have been very good stewards, but I'll definitely stand for questions. And uh, uh, Mr. Chair, okay. Before we uh, take questions, uh, Representative Lilly, uh, we do have a, a quorum uh, present, and uh, we do have the uh, minutes in our uh, packets. Uh, Representative Wilson, uh, Mr. Chair, I move the minutes from the April 12th meeting. Okay, the motion is before us. Uh, any discussion? Seeing none. Then uh, those. Uh, in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carried. Uh, to get the uh, bill moving, uh, Representative Lilly, do you have a motion to adopt uh, the committee? Thank you, report? Mr. Chair. Yes, I would move that. Uh, I move adoption of the Legacy Division <coughs> report for House File 653. Okay, the motion is uh, before us. Any discussion? Uh, seeing none, then all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carried. Uh, Representative Lilly, would you care to move the bill? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I move that House File 60, 653 as amended be recommended to play, be placed on the General Register. Okay, the uh, motion is uh, before us, and uh, uh, Representative Lilly uh, gave us uh, an overview of the uh, bill a few moments ago, and we're at that point now for uh, questions. So are there any questions of Representative Lilly? Representative Skowski. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you, Representative Lilly. <clears throat> as, a, as a House Democrats continue to move us in the direction of, uh, of socialism, because that's what your party's doing nationally, I see a lot of it here, I'm, I have to ask my perennial question, um, how much land uh, does the bill buy in terms of dollar value, in terms of acres, and then how many acres of easement uh, does the uh, Bill take out of uh, essentially take land out of the hands of uh, hardworking Minnesotans. Representative Lilly. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm, I'm going to invite Mr. Uh, Johnson from Lassard Sam's because most of the land that's acquired, I think, is in the Lassard Sam's portion of the bill. Um, um, the, you know, I, I respect. Uh, 
you immensely, um, Representative Raskowski, but uh, you know the voters did uh, did want us to uh, preserve and protect, and sometimes that does mean uh, purchase and uh, put it in the hands of the of the public. Um, not everybody is uh, um, uh, wealthy as maybe the insurance agent in front of me here, but uh, you know not all of us can uh, not all of us can buy a lot of land and get on it. And so um, these are sometimes uh, purchases that allow people to have uh, uh, access and get on it. And, uh, and there are, anyways, it's, I don't want to uh, stir the pot, but uh, no, I appreciate the question. Mr. Johnson, Mr. would you? Johnson, uh, uh, did you hear the question? Mr. Mr. Chair, Johnson, yes. Did yes, the, I did, Mr. Question. Chair. Uh, Mr. Chair and members, uh, the, uh, the bill as it stands, from the outdoor heritage standpoint, um, or a portion of the bill, anticipates acquisition of about 4,993 acres. Now that depends on the cost of the property and whether those properties are available at the time of acquisition, um, or of, uh, after appropriation, I'm sorry. The, uh, that's land with pilt. Now land without pilt, we're looking at about 5,446 acres. And that meaning those lands would then uh, either be on the tax roll still owned by local government, managed by county force, or something of, of such. Um, and those are, I'm sorry, the first ones was with PILT, without PILT is 5,446. From an easement standpoint, we're anticipating 7,700 acres of easement that would be acquired. The, um, you asked the dollars that would be expended for that, and again, the anticipation is that um, the with PILT acres would cost about $27 million. The without PILT uh, fee acquisition would be about $15 million, and the easement acquisition would be about $23.7 million. <laughs> Representative Driskowski. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and um, thank you, uh, Mr. Johnson, Representative Lilly. Representative Lilly, we, yes, the government already owns 25% of the state of Minnesota. I don't know how much uh, you or others want to uh, continue to, to grow um, government ownership uh, in this state, but uh, I appreciate the numbers. Uh, Mr. Johnson, you first came out with 4,900 acres, and I was I was ready to cheer, but um, <laughs> uh, because uh, traditionally, members, uh, just to remind you, uh, we have since 2008 or 2009, which probably I think was the first year of this, uh, seen where the taxpayers have bought uh, 10,000 acres of land or more each uh, time this bill comes forward, 10,000 acres. So um, Mr. Johnson or Representative Lilly, maybe Mr. Johnson, how do those, uh, how do those purchase prices uh, compare to the market? What we oftentimes have happening here with these is that government outbids uh, private people on these lands. Um, have you... Have you done a market analysis? Uh, uh, tell us about that um, process, if you would. Mr. Chair and uh, uh, Member Driskowski, the, uh, uh, the lands that are acquired with Outdoor Heritage Funds are acquired at appraised value. So they are, um, uh, the only way that the government would be, that, that the lands would be purchased at a higher price than a citizen would be willing to pay is if the citizen is not willing to pay appraised value. Um, that's, that's just how it goes. Um, I, I'm sorry, was there another part to that question? Yeah, it was, Mr. It was, Mr. Chair. Um, were there, are there third party organizations involved, um, Mr. Johnson, in, uh, in buying some of this land? Do you have, uh, you have third party organizations that go out and buy the land and then uh, the Outdoor Heritage Fund or an organization uh, that is is uh, articulated with Outdoor Heritage Fund actually buys the land from them. Is that still happening? Mr. Johnson. Mr. Chair, Member Drezkowski, the, uh, yes, we do have third party um, uh, participants. And for instance, uh, Pheasants Forever or the Nature Conservancy, uh, Minnesota Deer Hunters Association or others may purchase the property with an outdoor heritage appropriation and then transfer that to the state or to a county or to uh, whatever end holder it would be. The, or in some cases um, with the Nature Conservancy in particular, they will at times hold some of that property in their own, uh, with their own title 
and uh, or hold it under their own name, and then they will pay tax on that uh, property tax as we go forward. Those uh, each of those organizations we've contacted and and done that market analysis to find or that analysis to find out what are they paying, and they are all sticking to. Um, because they are nonprofits and because they have a set of standards to stick to, they're also sell purchasing the property for appraised value. Well, thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, Mr. Johnson. I, my experience has been the Nature Conservancy and other groups will outbid people locally on these, and then they will own the land and turn around and sell it uh, through this process. Um, but uh, I appreciate your comments, Mr. Johnson, on that, and uh, those are heartening if indeed that's happening. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, Representative Davids. Well, thank you, Mr. Chair. And basically three parts here, and, and uh, people can get back to me uh, later on the first two. I'd like to know how geographically balanced this is and how much goes in Republican House members' district, how much goes in Democrat House districts, because I don't see any much for the southeastern. I know there's a lot of statewide stuff, so that would not need to be included. But I'd like that breakdown. I don't need it right now. Uh, like I said, as to how much is seven county metro, how much is outstate, and then how much is in various members' districts. I don't see anything in mine, and that's very, very rare uh, for me. Uh, I was wondering if I could get someone from the Historical Society to, uh, if I could ask, ask a couple questions. Is the Historical Society present? Um, I don't see anybody uh, here. Okay. okay, that's fine. Well, maybe to, to the author here. You and I, I believe, sat on this committee when it was started. Uh, Chair Murphy was chair and I think did a great job putting this thing together. And you were yes, on that. Sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. And uh, so in that bill, there is provision for the Historic Society that a project uh, was eligible in Fillmore County, and that still hasn't been done yet. Uh, and, you know, it's excuse after excuse. Are you aware of, uh, you know, we put in there that this one project was eligible. In other words, it qualified for funding. And to this day, over 10 years later, it still hasn't been funded. Are you aware of what happened there, Mr. Uh, Chair Lilly? Representative Lilly. Um, Mr. Chair and Representative Davids, uh, I'm, I'm not aware of what happened, but we can certainly uh, check with the Historical Society folks and see what's happened. Uh, um, I, I have heard, uh, to kind of answer generally your other questions, uh, this money is spent all over the state. Uh, um, I, <coughs> I would hope that, uh, um, for example, the Arts uh, Council and, uh, um, would, would give you a printout of all your districts uh, of, of what, what money spent. Um, example being, just yesterday there was a award given for uh, Amper's program in, uh, uh, radio channel out of uh, Winona, so there, you know that's going on. There's parks and trails money all over the state that's being spent. There's, uh, I'm familiar. I can't mention all the projects, but it it seemed like we're doing. Um, uh, Lassard Sam's definitely had projects in the southeast Minnesota. Um, there was uh, a trout stream restoration that I was aware of or am aware of, and there was also some forest work and there's some uh, some work on uh, what's this home of a water skiing, Lake City. Um, there's some um, money there. Anyways, I could kind of keep going. <laughs> well, thank you, I Chair. I don't have an answer to your yes. history question. Thank you, Chair Lillian. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. You know, I look through here, and yes, the statewide things are statewide. That's wonderful and beautiful. Uh, but I see a lot of things for the cities, the Seven County Metro, and I just don't see anything going through here. Like, you know, you got the Met Council, you got the zoo, you got this and that and the other thing, but nothing that I see for the southeast. Uh, and, you know, Lake City is not southeast. That's north for me. <laughs> uh, that, that's up north. Uh, so uh, with that being said, I, I am really concerned about you, uh, that promise that was made to my constituents back in. 19 uh, or 2000 when was that 2009 yep. 2009 and hasn't been fulfilled yet by the historical society so uh, you'll probably be so I'd like to visit with you about it further there'll probably be an amendment uh, for the house floor uh, to one of the amendments that says no you really need to obey the law you really need to do this because you haven't done it for over 10 years uh, and so that's quite disturbing uh, 
So I appreciate that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, with that, uh, Representative Lilly uh, renews his motion that um, House File 653, as amended, be recommended to be placed on the General Register. Any further discussion? Uh, seeing none, then all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 <laughs> motion carries. Uh, we have the uh, LCCMR bill up uh, next. And uh, Mr. Chair, as, uh, oh. as Representative Hansen's coming. I didn't realize you wanted to comment, Representative Lilly. Uh, I just uh, kind of a sticker on this. I really want to thank our House researchers, uh, 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 Janelle Taylor, uh, Helen Roberts, and Mary Mullen, and Brad Hagmeyer. They're uh, um, our nonpartisan staff, and uh, it's quite impressive. And anyways, I just want to thank you. Thank you for your and time this you, morning. Thank uh, you, Representative Lilly. Uh, Representative uh, Nelson, uh, or Hansen, excuse me. Um, it's early. Um, scared me like that. <laughs> <laughs> and you want to present the bill. Um, and uh, the first thing we need to do is adopt the uh, division report. Uh, Mr. Hansen, Mr. Mr. Chair, report? I move adoption of the Environment and Natural Resources Finance Division Report for House Maybe. File 2032. Okay, the motion is uh, before us. Uh, any discussion? Seeing none, then all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Uh, Representative Hanson, would you like to move the bill? I move that House File 2032, as amended, be recommended to be placed on the General Register. Okay, the uh, motion uh, is before us. Uh, if you could uh, give us an overview of the bill, and I would just like to mention uh, we're in pretty good shape, but uh, we want to probably leave uh, to go up to the House floor uh, five or ten minutes early. Um, you might, Representative uh, Hansen, mention uh, one of the reasons that we need to be there on time. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We will be doing a, a memorial for the fallen conservation officer uh, as after we come in quickly. So um, that will be, and there will be a color guard from the DNR uh, outside the chamber. So if we could move relatively quickly. Um, House File 2032 is a product of the Legislative Citizen Commission on Minnesota Resources. It provides uh, appropriations uh, in fiscal year 2019 and 2020 uh, from the Environmental and Natural Resources Trust Fund. Um, I have with me Becca Nash who could describe the bill. I'm going to uh, focus a bit on the changes that were made uh, because of the bill that we passed earlier this year changing the appropriation bonds to the general obligation bonds. So that freed up, there was money that was appropriated for debt service in 2019 and in 2020. Uh, that was not expended. So I'm just going to go through the changes that we did to use that money that was going to go for debt service. In general, these changes are adding to existing appropriations that were recommended from the uh, LCCMR or they were for uh, pro projects that were cut uh, in the prior year. So we're adding 250k for increasing diversity in environmental careers, adding 780k for accelerating the non-game wildlife program, that's the chickadee checkoff that's on, on your taxes, added 636,000 for a native bee survey in northern Minnesota. Representative Draskowski for purchases, uh, what we're doing with the Minnesota State Parks and State Trails is doing in-holdings or connections so we're adding where there's a part of in, within a park or within a trail that has not been that's been authorized, but that has not been completed. Senior so, Representative Hanson, could you maybe uh, we've got the volume up as high as it will go? Should I go? And uh, this is kind of a long, narrow room. Maybe if you could move the mic a little closer, if that might. Testing. Oh. How about now? Hello. How about if I just project like this? Can you hear me? My wife would say my best teaching voice when I was actively teaching. So maybe if you can do that, um, and in the meantime, we'll see what we can find out of getting the sound system a little better. So we increase the Minnesota State Trails, uh, parks, and in holdings. So that, those are the properties within state parks or within trails. We increase that 1 million to 1.907 million. We increase Minnesota State Trails development by appropriating. Uh, uh, 
124K in FY19 and increasing from 5 million to 8.247 million in FY20. We increased the Britain Peak to Lutzen Mountain Bike Trail project by 50K. We increased the Birch Lake Recreation Area Campground project by 350K. We add 3.406 million for Native Prairie Bank conservation easements and landowner assistance. We add 200K to the City of Rainier to enhance and increase public access to Rainy Lake by constructing an ADA compliant recreational parking lot, an ADA compliant public restroom, and an AIS aquatic invasive species boat wash station. We added 330K to the LCCMR grants management system. We eliminated uh, 1.5 million for water infrastructure grants and allow for up to 6.5 million from the corpus of the trust to be invested into loans through the Public Facilities Authority's Clean Water Revolving Loan Fund. We extended two projects, uh, Representative David's South Eastern Minnesota subsurface drainage impacts on groundwater recharge from 2015 that was not completed, so we extended the, uh, the timeline on that, and protection of state's confined drinking water aquifers phase two, phase two from 2017. Uh, so those are the changes uh, uh, since the bill left the LCCMR. Okay, any uh, discussion? Representative Duskowski. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, thank you, Representative Hanson. Two questions. One, um, how much uh, land um, is uh, the government now going to occupy forever that the uh, private citizens of Minnesota no longer can, uh, according to this bill? And then uh, the amount of... Um, easements as well. Mr. Mr. Chair and Representative Draskowski, so the dollar figures that I gave you for the state parks that every, and trails everyone will use, I have the dollars but not the acres there. Maybe Ms. Nash can provide that. Ms. Nash. Um, Mr. Chair, Representative Draskowski, in your packets I believe you have a handout that um, we broke down the dollars and acres and also showed the ge geographic distribution around the state. So, <clears throat> excuse me, these are still based on the original LCCMR recommendations, but I can tell you from that vantage, um, the acquisition um, is about 555 acres for the state park inholdings um, and scientific and natural areas that Representative Hansen spoke to. Uh, approximately 75 acres, um, that's just an estimate because the local <laughs> grant program is um, actually granting to local units of government that are applying competitively. So, the, so that's a, um, a historical average. We're, we're averaging about 75 acres. And then about 405 acres of easements. That's um, trail easements as well as conservation easements. And of course, those um, are going to local units of government or um, nonprofits as well. Mr. Skowski. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you, um, and Representative Hansen, thank you for keeping the, the, the numbers down on some of the acquisitions compared to uh, the past. Um, your comment, so Representative Hansen, was that uh, was it seven million is going towards a revolving loan fund. Um, so the legislature and the far left organizations were uh, were critical of what passed uh, last year and uh, took them to court, sued the state of Minnesota, and the legislature uh, capitulated. And, uh, and the, the idea was, uh, or the argument was, well, this money is not supposed to be used for debt service. Um, and, you, you know, the projects obviously were still to pre protect our water, which is, and we had those arguments before. but. Now there's $7 million coming forward for a revolving loan fund. Um, how, do you, uh, how, how do you sort that out? Representative Hansen. Mr. Chair and Representative Draskowski, I believe we sort that out because the prior bills and the challenges that were there were for wastewater treatment grants. And the litigation that you referenced of the five counts that were uh, in the court case, there were two counts that de dealt with grants being an improper usage of the trust fund. The reason that that was an improper usage of the trust fund is when, if you go back to the creation of the lottery and the creation of the trust fund, and former Representative Will Willard Munger was very clear that if we broke the seal on wastewater treatment grants, then that would eat up the whole lottery, that that would be it because there's enough demand for wastewater treatment grants. So that wa wastewater treatment loans, which are going through the Public Facilities Authority, 
So that's their, their normal rate of loans. And that's coming out of the corpus are constitutionally sound versus grants. Because you're not, uh, you're, it's going out of the corpus and then back into the corpus versus a grant that's going out for wastewater treatment. And uh, there are members that were here when those debates occurred if, if uh, uh, you have any clarification. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Representative Hanson. Okay, any further uh, discussion? Uh, seeing none, uh, Representative Hanson, would you care to renew your motion? I renew my motion that House File 2032, as amended, be recommended to be placed on the General Register. Okay, any further discussion? Uh, seeing none, then all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you, Representative Thank you. Hanson and Ms. Nash. Um, Uh, we gather again uh, tomorrow uh, at 8 o'clock in this room. Um, House convenes at 9, and let's uh, hope that um, Health and Human Services goes a bit faster today so that uh, we have a little longer uh, night at home. That's your side of the aisle, folks. Uh, I understand you already have 80-some amendments filed. Oh, it's up to 114 now. So, um, yeah, all right, with that, uh, eight o'clock tomorrow morning, the meeting adjourned. I say two.